today we're talking about long term care option for senior citizens, both in the home and outside of the home. Here today to share some advice on this is Monica Wright, Executive Director of the Cato Council on Aging. Well, Monica, what are some of those signs that families should be looking for? Of how do we know which of our loved ones who have been managing on their own probably need some assistance at this time? Uh, whenever you notice weight loss, um, they're not able to manage their financial obligations they were before. Uh, maybe there's some fall hazards or fire hazards. Sometimes you may go in and realize that they forgot to turn the stove off. Hmm. Um, Which is very dangerous. It is very dangerous. Maybe there's been a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia. Those hmm. are some signs that the individual needs some additional care. Is it um, exactly when somebody is diagnosed or is it when it progresses? Do you happen to know just for the individuals who maybe are just coming in? So into it contact? just depends on what stage that person is when they are diagnosed because some people are diagnosed fairly early and they still can function on their own and then other people may be diagnosed at a time where they do need some type of assistance. Monica, once we decide that um, our loved ones are needing a facility, how do we go about managing those options? Like what should we be considering? Besides so, obviously pricing, but there's also other things as well versus full-time, part-time, you know, 24-7 nursing care. So I, you should consult with the physician or any other type of medical individuals that are involved with the person care. Uh, get Recommendation, recommendations from them, determine that person's level of care that is needed uh, before you decide. If you decide that the person can still stay at home, look at the options for the different resources that where you can get assistance in the home. If they need to be in a facility, then you know you will look at the different type of facilities. Got that. So sometimes all they need is a little help with daily chores or a little help with meals. What kind of options do we have for part-time help of that sort, if, if any? So the state of Louisiana, the Department of Health, they have a, a long-term care program and they also have a personal care program. It's for individuals that are on Medicaid, so you can reach out to that department. Also, if you're able to pay, you can look and search for different agencies that provide personal care or long-term care. And then at Cattle Council on Aging, we provide assistance with meals, the home delivery meals. And you that, were saying that, that those are free, right? Yes, they okay. are free. There's no charge for those. Then we also have a light housekeeping and personal care programs. For individuals, caregivers that are taking care of a senior citizen and they're full-time caregivers, we also have a caregiver respite program that provides relief from that, uh, the stress of taking care of somebody 24 hours a day. What does that look like? So with that caregiver program, um, it, it's designed so that there's not stress. So the person doesn't um, become stressed out or ill before the person they're taking care of. But once they're signed up for the program, they can call in and they can request a care attendant to come in uh, at their discretion and they will help take care of their loved one. Wonderful. And again, Monica, I know you talked about this um, a few weeks ago, but those Meals on Wheels, those are actually free for our, our elderly individuals. What is the age that that starts at? 60. person has to be 60. Okay. And how, how do they get involved with that? Do they just give you a call or how does that walk us through that process? So they would call our office. We would take some basic information from the person, um, just their name, address, telephone number, and then we will call them back at a time to set up a schedule for an appointment to go in and do an assessment. And during that assessment, what we're doing is screening them to see their, what their function level is. See if they have any family or friends that can support them with uh, providing that service. If not, then we will sign them up for the program. Uh, we do have a waiting list, but as soon as a spot becomes available in the area that they live in, then we will add them to the service. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Monica, for talking to us today about the different options that we can look into and when to start actually looking for uh, other assistance and help at this time. Thank you.